Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager say This is episode number 45. And we could qualify for the Champions League today. Oh my god. Right, so it's the final game of the season. Um, it is match day 38 in the Premier League. Not going to show you, of course, in the run off camera because there were no games off camera. You saw the past three. Uh, the draw with Spurs, the win over Manchester United and of course the loss to Liverpool in our final ever game of the Vitality. This is the table. This is ridiculous, right? So... <laughs> Arsenal can be champions of a win today and they're away at Anfield as Liverpool head in to the final day knowing that a win for them will all but guarantee Champions League football. They're level with Chelsea on goal difference. They're ahead of us by a point in sixth. They're ahead of Spurs and Leeds by two. So on the final game with us on 62 points right now, we could finish fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth or even ninth. We could drop to ninth on the final day or finish as high as fourth. It's a ludicrous final day. All we know is if we do win, we guarantee, at the very least, a Europa League place for next season. We might need a result in order to at least finish in the top seven to guarantee, at the very, very least, Conference League football for next season, which I would take because we just need to make sure we stay in a European competition of some sort. So final day fixtures, the ones to keep out, uh, keep your uh, keep your eyes on. Leeds away at Craven Cottage with Fulham already down right now. That should be a banker. Again, Liverpool play host to Arsenal, who they themselves can win the title or win there. So that's a tough one for the Reds. So fingers crossed, Arsenal can do us a massive favour and secure their championship with a win. Uh, Newcastle home to Everton, they should win that one. Have just sat Pep Guardiola though due to their struggling season this year. Chelsea away against our rival Southampton. I think they'll win that one as well. Spurs are on to Brighton. Could be a tricky test there to be fair. And of course we're away against West Ham as well. So re realistically I, I can't see both Liverpool and Chelsea failing to win. Like one of those teams is going to win. So I'm not even thinking about fourth. I, I can't see it happening. But fifth, sixth or seventh Definitely, definitely, definitely still a possibility. But we will probably have to win this game. West Ham got nothing to play for. We did lose our last game on Wednesday night. But other than that, we've been in good form. Fingers crossed we can bounce back here and secure a European place, even if it's not the Champions League. So, we're going to stick with the 4-3-3 gig and press, despite the loss of home to Liverpool, and this will be our team. Couple of changes to our lineup as George is in goal. The back four is now Smallcomb, Mascara, Garza and Aaron, with Ducore, McTominay and Scott through the middle. Batarina and Traore are our inside forwards, and Sargent, who scored against the Reds, is up top. On the bench, you've got Ward, Zabani, Mitchell, Forsby, Blanco, Radilovic, McKenny, Tav, and Delap as well. It's the final game of the season, and a win at the very least guarantees a European place. Don't worry too much about the top four, let's just make sure we stay in Europe. You know when the first highlight comes directly from kickoff, it's always nerve-wracking, isn't it? It's always nerve-wracking, because even though it's a 50-50 chance you'll get a goal, like you still feel as though you're going to concede right from the first whistle. Thankfully, we have won it back though, as McTominay finds Sargent and plays a lovely through ball, and it's Martin Batterina! Oh, drags it just wide of the post. It's not been his year. It's been his worst season in a Bournemouth shirt. And he really should have hit the target there. But it's a good start for the Cherries. Gaz down the left. Back to Ducore and check. Finds McTominay. And Suchek makes the tackle and away come West Ham on the break. Garza loses out to Jared Bowen. He's one on one. West Ham are in front. Quick counter-attack from West Ham. Jared Bowen skips past our young Mexican and slots it home at the near post. That's what Martin Batarina should have done. So, West Ham lead. As things stand, we're going to drop out of European place. So, that's a good start. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, Mascara, what a poor pass. Skamaka's just done him in. What a great recovery tackle, to be fair. And Giant Lucas header is going to hit the bar. And Georgie gets up. Oh, lads, lads are going to fire him up. This is this is terrible. Do you not realise what's at stake here, lads? Do you not realise what's at stake? We, we don't want to have our first season at our new stadium with no European football at all. I'd take the bloody Conference League. Aaron's down the right. Can he cross? Well, he's got two men to beat. He's found Traore. He's Scott in the middle. Yes! Batterina from close range. Was he offside, though? He was very close to the goal line. I think that's offside. Batterina couldn't miss from there, but I think that's off. Does it stand? It doesn't. He looked literally like a yard out when the ball was fizzing. It's very tight, to be fair. It's very tight indeed. But I think it's probably the right call. You've got, you got to trust the game, right? And West Ham still have the lead. 
seven and a half minutes in, it's two. We are absolutely bottling it. Former Fox, Dewsbury Hill into the middle. And Skamaka, the big tall Italian, gives West Ham a two-goal lead. As things stand, we are staying in the top seven. But we know destiny is well out of our own hands at this point here. This, this could not have been a worse start. We've absolutely bottled it. Lost on Wednesday night and oh, I did not expect this. I thought we'd beat West Ham comfortably. How is it? Def oh, off the post from Sergeant on the rear. How is it that the easiest game of our Final Four is the one where we're 2-0 down inside 10 minutes? Typical FM. To be fair, we've actually done all right out there so far. 15 minutes in, as Sergeant heads the ball onto the top of the crossbar. We've hit the woodwork twice. We've had a, a couple of good one-on-ones. We've had a ball in the back of the side. We're actually, we're doing fine. Like, we're genuinely doing fine out there. We, we don't deserve to be 2-0 down. McTominay can strike him. Three times we hit the woodwork in 20 minutes. This is ridiculous. Chelsea are now tuned up on Southampton. So forget all about the Champions League. As Skamaka, oh, this is ridiculous. It was onside. It's going to stand. This, this is ridiculous. We are 3-0 down in 25 minutes. And we've genuinely played really well. This is typical. Thankfully, Everton are tuning up on Newcastle. It's and James just saw that in the bottom left. But this is absolutely... What, what can you do at this point? Like, we do, we've, we're actually playing fine. Like, we're doing all right out there. We've been to woodwork three times. Disallow goal. And we're down by three. This is just typical. Max's cross... Headed what? This is ridiculous, man. Liverpool level with Arsenal. Not that that result really matters now. Brighton, thankfully, are still holding Spurs. But if Brighton do take, sorry, Spurs do take the lead there in North London, we're going to drop out of the top seven. So unless we can pull off an absolute miracle here, Istanbul-esque away in London, it's over. Batterina, great dribbling, but the finish is stopped by Long. I, I mean, what, what at this point would you do? Like you're playing well. You're creating loads of chances. Arsenal now in front against Lille plus here in the bottom left. But we're, we're, doing, we're doing fine. Like, we're, we're, we're actually doing fine out there. We just can't score. Yes, we can! McTominay! Come on, boys. That's what we needed, man. That is what we needed. It's what we deserved, and it's what we needed. It's a great cross by David. The centre-back turned into a right-winger. And the captain leading like a captain should. Heads it home, near post, past George Long. It is 3-1. We are back in this. So I've just seen that Brighton are in front against Spurs as well in, in North London. And I, you know what I'm going to say to the boys at the break here? I'm going to say to the boys with my hands together, like genuinely you've been unlucky. We're playing well. Like we are playing well out there, man. 3-1 is a ridiculous scoreline for our, for, our, for our performance so far. So as things stand, we're staying in the top seven. But only just. But I still think we need a comeback of all comebacks here. Garza's header goes just wide. We're getting the chances, boys. We just got to take them. West Ham get another goal and it's over. There's definitely a couple more goals today. It's been such an open game. And Garza, you've got to be careful there. Well done, mate. And oh, no. Why would you do that? Why would you do that, David? Bowen's header is the crossbar. Let off. Everton tuning up on Newcastle. Leeds are beating Fulham. As things stand, you to Spurs slipping up to Brighton. The Suchek heads over. We're still... Scraping a top seven finish by the skin of our teeth here. It's all on Brighton now. We need them to, to hold on to their win against Spurs. If they do that, we guarantee top seven. But I'm, I'm sure Spurs will get back in that game there. Surely. There's small comb. Back to Mascara. And with 25 minutes to go, there's, there's definitely at least one more goal today. Definitely at least one more goal. We get it and you never know. West Ham get it. It's over. Batterina skips around a couple of players. Finds Traore. It's a great ball. It's Scott McTominay. It's the post. Four times. I mean, what, what can you say? What can you say? Like, genuinely, we've played well. Genuinely. But four times. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Well, that is going to do it. And if Brighton can continue to hold on there, we will guarantee a top seven place by the skin of our teeth. But, I mean, we've bottled it. We, we've lost our last two games. Pablo Fornals could wrap it up here from 20 yards, which I think he'll do. And he hits the post. Both teams with the woodwork four times this afternoon. Each. Each. 
Unbelievable. So it's, it's over here. It, it's over here. I can't believe we've lost this despite how well we've played. The, the, the question is, did Spurs lose on the final day? If they did, we stay in 7th. If they found their leveller, I think that's it. Did we do it? Did, did, are, we, are we there? I'm going to say unlucky because we played well there. Have we made it? Have we clung on? Have we salvaged it? Courtesy of results going our way? <sighs> Kozlowski is a Bournemouth fan favourite. Newcastle lost to Everton at home. Spurs lost to Brighton. The bottle jobs on the final day. Absolutely ludicrous. Newcastle and Spurs absolutely blew it. And Bournemouth, despite losing back-to-back, -back, just about finished seventh. What a, what a let-off. And in the end, Manchester not 5-0 win. And Arsenal's draw at Anfield sees them champions. So Arsenal's wait for a Premier League goes on. Manchester United the first team to win the league title two times in the save. I thought it was going to be a different winner for all five seasons. But in the end, the Red Devils win it. They're second in four. Man City in third. Chelsea in the end, after their win over Southampton, do finish in the top four place. Leeds' win against Fulham propels them into the top six. And whilst it's not the Europa League, and it really should have been, a win would have seen us finish in sixth. No, when it would have finished, seen us finishing fifth. A win would have guaranteed a fifth place finish. I'll take it. It is just one win in four. But it is Europa Conference League. Um, I'm going to take it. Embarrassing, though. Absolutely embarrassing. You know, like, literally, we... Two minutes into the final game of the season. Did Sassuolo get a European place in the end? No, he didn't. Uh, two minutes into uh, to, to the final game of the season... We were at that stage qualifying for the Champions League. And in the end, we scraped seventh courtesy of two slip-ups from Spurs and Newcastle. That is, that, is bot that is bottling from Bournemouth, that is. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm pleased. I'm pleased we stay in Europe, but it's still a bottle, John, no matter how you look at it. What's our budget for next season? 70 million. Se 70 million for the new season. I, I, uh, Sergeant hasn't been that bad this season, but I think we need a new striker. 11 goals in 33. Yeah, yeah, you know, I said to him this season, I have the same sort of record as the past three, and for a first year, I'll take that, especially with six assists, but I, I think we need a new striker. He, he, we didn't, we didn't expect him to be Dominic Solanke, but I did expect a little bit better. I think we need a new striker with that money next season. So for our end of season review, Delap was the signing of the season, which absolutely stunned me. I would have given him a scarer personally, and then maybe Small come afterwards. But um, I don't know how it was Delap over Mascara or Small coming. But even so, Delap was the uh, signing of the season, and in the end, I mean the, the board gave me a B for that, which I'm I'm pleased. But I'd say personally, I think that's a C. I think that's a C. Knowing that it could have been there so easily, and in the end we bottled it, I, I think that's a C. I think the board are being quite kind to me there. But the biggest one was a 4 0 win against Stoke City at the start of the season. Um, I don't know how that was a match to remember. Surely it was our win over Manchester United just so recently, you know? And Dalat won the goal of the season after that. Really? That's, that's, that's a real surprise, that. Batterina was our highest shirt seller this year, which has really surprised me because after his form, I think a lot of the fans want a refund on him. He was terrible this year. Absolutely terrible. And as for the accolades, uh, fans player of the year was Georgie. That's probably right, to be fair. Georgie set a new record for most clean sheets in a Premier League season for a Bournemouth goalkeeper. Ran a young player of the season. I agree with that as well. But the signing of the season, that, that really surprised me. I, I did not see that. So, as we wrap it up here, uh, the club vision, oh wow, look at that, look at that, the club vision and expectations has changed to a point now, where at the end of next season, we need to stay in the top 10, but after that we need to be recognised as the best of the rest, now the best of the rest for those curious is outside, oh top 8 now, really? Top top 8? Who, who's the 8th then? Newcastle and who? I don't know who that would be, but okay, fair enough. But uh, next year, the ball wants to win that Europa Conference League like we did last year. And yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. The board, the board know how hard it is to finish in the top four. So I, I, I rate that, to be fair. But I'm going to say to the boys here, season's over. Time for you to go out and have a well-deserved break. I want every single one you to be fully rested with positive frame of mind when you get back to so finish the top half position next year. Yep, they're totally fine with that. 
And I must say, I do like the fact that, yeah, let's go win it, boys. I do like the fact that the board, the board aren't being too ambitious. Listen, we're not ready for prime time. I know it would have been amazing. We're not ready yet. We're getting there, but we're not ready yet. So the Europa League is about to be played. It is Stad Rene uh, versus Real Sociedad. And hey, I'm pleased to see that Lloyd Kelly has won a trophy with Sociedad in his first year there. Go on, Lloyd. Go on, Lloyd. You love to see that. You're, you're open. Since leaving us, he's had a glow up. He's got his first two caps for England. He's won a trophy with uh, with Sociedad. He's going to Champions League next year. Oh, go on, Lloyd. No, no hard feelings for Kelly. So, FA Cup final, uh, Manchester Derby. We shall see who wins that. It is Manchester City. Uh, Vinish with the only goal of the game there. So, I'll, I'll do the Champions League and we'll, uh, we'll leave it after that one. And I've just seen as well that the Conference League final, which was played yesterday, um, didn't come up in my social feed. But that was won by another former... Um, oh, George in the favourite personnel now. Go on, mate. Um, that was won by another former um, Bournemouth player, Dominic Solanke, at Atalanta. He um, he helped Atalanta win the Conference League. Did he score in the final? Go on. Go on. Did he score? How do I... There we go. Oh, he did. He scored the winner. Dominic Solanke and Kelly both left us and both won trophies. Take note, guys. The grass is greener elsewhere. <laughs> They've both had glow up since leaving us. Not bitter, though. I still love them. And we shall end on this. I've just seen it. You might have seen it there on the left-hand side as well. Paris Saint-Germain have finally done it. They have won the Champions League final. They've beaten Arsenal in the final. Uh, quickly show the, uh, the, the the tree from the knockout stages. There you go. And PSG are finally Champions League winners. And Mbappe has done it. Fair play. I'd love, honestly, I'd love to see it. Like, everyone keeps saying, oh, he needs to lead to win the Champions League, Killian. He can't do it with PSG. Uh, wouldn't it just mean so much more if he won one at PSG? Like, like if you went to Real Madrid and won, you know, two, three, who knows, maybe four. Obviously, yeah, you know, he'll be delighted for that personally. But if he won it with PSG, I mean, wouldn't that be an amazing story? He is a Parisian, don't forget. Born in Paris. I mean, that would be incredible. Absolutely incredible. Oh, dear. Oh, championship. Sorry, I've got to do the championship as well. Who won the championship? I know Sunderland finished second. Crystal Palace versus Millsborough is the final. Is that today? If that if that's today, then I'm going to I'm gonna sim through that as well. I think it is. It is indeed. I sim through that. Right, then, who's coming up? Is it Crystal Palace or is it the Borough joining us in the Premier League next year? It is Crystal Palace. 4-1 victory in the final over Middlesbrough. So they, Leicester and Sunderland are heading back to the Premier League for next season. Lovely stuff, lovely stuff. Right, guys, we shall leave it there. So, massive thank you for watching the finale of Season 5. Bit of a bottle job to end the season. I can't dress it up any other way, let's be honest here. It was a bottle job, but thank the Lord at the very, very least. Even if it's not, not going to be a Champions League, even if we're staying in the Europa League, at least we have European football of some kind for next season. With £70 million pounds in our transfer budget, if we are to get back in the Europa League and potentially compete for our first ever Champions League spot, I think we need a new striker next season, no doubt about it. That's what I'll be targeting in the summer window. Fingers crossed, touch wood, I'll be able to find someone. It's very hard to make signings with a club of this stature, you know, elite signings at the very least, but I shall do my best in the summer transfer window. Have a great day though, guys. Much love to you all, and I will see you for the start of a brand... Oh, Smallcombe's a wonder kid now. Hey, another wonder kid. Wonder kid FC. I'll see you at the start of a brand new season with Bournemouth. Not out of vitality. It'll be season six for that first ever season at the Eddie Howe Stadium. There we go. <laughs> very soon. Love you guys. I'll see you in the new season very soon.